Good morning. Good morning. So good to see everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on this first Sunday of Advent. Uh, let's all rise together. And would you join me in a word of prayer as we prepare our hearts uh, to celebrate um, as we kick off this season of Advent. Loving God, we thank you so much for who you are, all that you've done for us, and all that you continue to do. And Lord, we humbly come before you um, as your people, Lord, to celebrate this season and to celebrate you, Lord, and to worship you with all of our hearts. God, we ask that you would be upon us uh, as we worship you, uh, that there be freedom in this place, and as we sing and as we hear your word, and as we go through this worship service, Lord, may it be pleasing to your sight. Lord, we thank you for our gathering. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together this morning. and invite the Ellis family up for for the Advent reading at this time. And you may be seated. Good morning. 
today we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. This is the candle of hope. With Christians around the world, we use this light to help us prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we receive God's light as we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. Isaiah 9-2. Let us pray. Lord, as we look to the birth of Jesus, grant that the light of your love for us will help us to become lights in the lives of those around us. Prepare our hearts for the joy and gladness of your coming, for Jesus is our hope. Amen. Let's all rise together as we continue the song of praise. Never 
Let's go ahead and greet one another as we get seated. Good morning, church. Uh, Okay, that was pretty weak. Good morning, church. That's better. Um, Welcome, everybody. We're so glad you're with us this morning on this first Sunday of Advent. Um, If you're with us in person, we're so glad you're here. And if you would, um, there's a black pad on the end of every row. If you take that, sign it, and pass it down just so we know you're here and we can keep track of your needs and how we can help you. And if you're watching online, welcome to you. We're glad you're with us this morning. And if you would, in the, there's a link in the information box of this stream. You can click on that and do online registration or leave us a comment down there and let us know you're with us. Um, but we are glad you're joining us. So for, with everybody, welcome. We are glad you are with us as we praise and worship our Lord uh, this morning. Um, we, I want to briefly, before we continue our praise and worship through our act of giving, want to um, highlight something if you didn't notice this morning, um, I don't know what you were thinking because you can't miss them. Um, I want to say a huge thanks to all of those who um, cut stars out, that painted stars, that primed stars and got them ready, that came in. Uh, yet Mike, when did you do them? Yesterday? Um, yeah, wake up, Mike. <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yesterday, a group of folks came in and installed all the stars out on the front lawn of the church and, and down Norman Circle, too. So um, they look awesome out there. So I want to thank everybody for um, whatever role you played in getting those stars out in the front lawn. Um, and you make all of that possible through your faithfulness and your giving. So we just want to thank you for that. Um, and um, just let you know, check them on the way out. If you missed them this morning, I don't know where your mind was because... You can't miss them. Um, so with that, I would like to call up our ushers. If you uh, two beautiful ladies would come help me this morning, I would appreciate it. Steps are slower than the adults. Come on up here. Come here, girls. Come here, turn around. One on each side. One on each side. There you go. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds for our act of giving. 
Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us and given us. And now, Lord, as our act of worship and praise, we give back to you what you have so graciously shared with us. Lord, please bless each giver and may you bless each gift beyond anything we can imagine. Lord, in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus, amen. Do we have any prayer concerns this morning? I would ask that we still continue to lift the Denny family up in our prayers. Um, it's my understanding that that service will be December 11th um, with a um, visitation at 12 in the fellowship hall, the service at one, and then a reception following the service in the reception hall. So um, on that's December the 11th. And Joyce Fallon's service, I believe, Ken, that I see that is the 18th. The following Saturday, Joyce Fallon's memorial will be on December 18th. So be in prayer for those. Michael, Lucille Walker, keep Lucille in our prayers. Any others? Well, keep it, everybody who's traveling today, we drove home from North Carolina yesterday and it was a nightmare. So I hope today's better. Um, and people are wiser in their driving choices than they were yesterday. Tracy. Okay, one at a time, make sure I got them right. Continues prayers for Bruce Knoxheim and for Tracy's dad, Frank Woodall. Tracy's dad, Frank Woodall. Any others? Thank you girls for your help this morning. Yes, ma'am, Miss Andrea. She's gonna be good. Andrea's mother, who was diagnosed with cancer, has had surgery in Brazil, correct? In Brazil, and she is doing well, making a, a recovery, but everything's good, everything went well. Praise God, thank you, Andrea, for sharing. <laughs> Any others? We wanna thank, um, I'll say it. You can email in. It's, T Tippins at DuluthUMC.org. Um, <laughs> we'll just say roll tide this morning and we'll leave it at that. Um, uh, right, Jeff? We good? Um, and all the other teams who won, Georgia won, the Florida Gators, Miss Jane, were, are you happy about yesterday? Yes. <laughs> who else said that? Who the other Florida? Yeah, Miss Terry's Florida fan. Um, Tech had a rough day, I'm sorry. Tigers, Clemson. The Hogs one eight wins this year who knew um the fighting irish had a good day do what well he was at arkansas before he went to georgia and then came back so he's going home to god's country um we got to get off of this <laughs> before people do start emailing um would you join me in prayer gracious and loving god this morning um we just come before you humbled and in awe of who you are, all you do, all you are doing, and all you promise you will continue to do. Lord, for those that we've raised up this morning with our concerns, with illnesses, with um, problems, with everything, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual, would your healing hand be on all of those we've raised up? And also, God, would your hand be on all of those, all of us who um, we all bring something with us this morning? Um, that we just carry with us, that we don't necessarily voice out loud. And would you be with those worries and anxieties? Lord, would you be with the family of Bill Denny through this time of loss through the holidays? And would you be with the family of Joyce Fallon as they grieve through the holidays? Lord, we thank you for the celebrations, the joys we can raise. Andrea's mother in Brazil, we thank you for that joy and that celebration and all the rest of them we, we, we can raise up this morning. And Lord, we just ask you to be with everyone across this country in the coming days and weeks. And may they, Lord, experience your love and your grace and your mercy and may a revival begin in this season of Advent when we remember and we look forward and we're kind of in this middle place. And would your presence be seen, the joy and the love and the peace and the hope in a world that right now seems to be so lacking. 
So, Lord, we ask you, would people see and feel your presence? Now, Lord, would you speak to us this morning? Would you bless the reading of your word and the hearing of your word this morning? And may we look to you and you alone. And Lord, we pray all of this this morning in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. Would you hear God's word this morning from the gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 37. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, today, today is a day of celebration, right? Today is a day of celebration. Um, and may I be the first to tell you, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you. And I know some of you are looking at me going, it's only November 28th. Dude, where's your calendar? Um, today is the first Sunday of Advent. And in our church calendar, in our church year, this is, the, this is New Year's Day. We are beginning a new church calendar year today. And the liturgical color, the big fancy word for um, the colors and everything we use and, and all those things, the, the liturgical color, like it is at Lent, is purple. So you will see a lot of purple uh, coming in the next couple of weeks, several weeks. And Advent, again, like Lent, is a season of reflection. It's a season of reflection. It's a season of repentance and sorrow. But it's also a season of preparation and a season of waiting and a season of anticipation and longing. Yes, Advent is the season when we reflect on our readiness or lack of it to welcome Jesus. And when, when we as Christian people prepare, we wait for, we anticipate and long for his coming, which we celebrate each year at Christmas. And our gospel verses today from the gospel of Mark, this first Sunday of Advent, they aid us in our weeks of reflection and preparation, waiting and reflection and preparation prior to Christmas as we strive for personal spiritual renewal. And as we prepare to be ready to welcome Jesus into our lives and into our hearts afresh. On that joyful morning of Christmas, morning. So today is New Year's Day in the church calendar. It's the first Sunday of Advent. We have four Sundays of Advent, and you know what that means. It means today's week one. Joanna says not the whole suit on the first Sunday of Advent. That's too much of a shock for anybody. 
So it will come in stages and phases. One extra garment a week until we wear the whole outfit on the last Sunday of, right, Josh? You're waiting all year for this, for the last Sunday of Advent. Um, But it it is, and we celebrate this day. And this passage today, as, as, as we look forward to Advent, from the Gospel of Mark, this, this passage today, the, the, Jesus is sitting with his disciples and he's on the, on the Mount Olives, the Mount of Olives, and he's, and he's sitting there and they're having this discussion. And, and they ask the disciples, they're looking off over the city of Jerusalem and Jesus has told them that the temple will no longer stand. It will be destroyed. It will be leveled to the ground. And the disciples are asking him, when will this happen? When will this happen? So Jesus goes through this list of things, and some of them are not pleasant. There's persecution, there's death, there's fire, there's all kind of things. And Jesus said, all these things were coming before this will happen in the second, and I will return. But he says, nobody knows when that day will be. I don't even know. Jesus says, only the Father knows. And aren't aren't we guilty of that sometimes? I mean, we live our lives on our calendar and our reminders and our desktops and everything, everything Joanna tells me um, that I hear part of. um, Joanna says, put a reminder on your phone. Right? And, And I know Joanna's in sales and she's got everything laid out day by day, hour by hour, appointments and everything. And we do that. We want to know when things are happening. And Jesus is saying, nobody knows. Only God. Only the Father knows. And there's probably a day that goes by that we don't wait. Right? There's not a day that goes by that we don't wait on something. We might wait for the train and get ticked off and start yelling. We might wait for the train in in downtown Duluth when you got to be somewhere and the train comes through at like five mile an hour um, and takes forever. Everybody, anybody else been there? (laughs) Um, Or we wait in the line at the grocery store or we spend our time waiting to see a doctor in the waiting room or we wait in traffic or we wait in line in carpool, drop off or pick off, uh, pick up at school. Waiting is just a part of our lives even though none of us particularly love it, it's part of our lives. And have you noticed that all of us have different ways of waiting? Everybody has a different way of doing it. Some of us pace, while others, we bite our nails. Some respond in anger and they get upset. And they have this attitude of their time and their, that, that they and their time are more important than anybody else or anybody else's time. Other people respond in, I wish I could do this. They respond in just this quiet and calm acceptance of just is the way things are. And a few are indifferent. I remember uh, when my girls were young and we would go, Caitlin, the older one, um, I would go pick her up after school in carpool line and Casey would go with me. And did we have fun or what, Case? We would crank the radio up in my truck, roll down every window in the truck, and Casey put it on either something that Casey and I could scream and sing at the top of our lungs while Caitlin was coming to the truck, or to the Hispanic station and would just turn it up as loud as Casey could get it. That was our way of waiting in the carpool line. Caitlin didn't appreciate it. But we had fun, didn't we? Um, and this, this season of Advent that we're entering today, our first Sunday, is a time of waiting and preparing. We're waiting for the return of Jesus as King of kings and Lord of lords. We're preparing for something more than our Christmas parties or our giving of presents and receiving of presents. We're preparing our lives and our world for the return of Jesus. And we celebrate that Jesus came to earth as a child and we remember that and celebrate it and we wait and anticipate his return as king. And we kind of live in this odd place of in between of the first coming 
and the anticipated second coming. And we were talking in Sunday school this morning. In, in Scripture, there are over 700 promises God makes to us. And 700 and something minus one have already been fulfilled. There's one promise left unfulfilled. And what is that unfulfilled promise? The return of Jesus. And I don't know if I'm just naive, but after 700 and some odd promises that have been fulfilled, I tend to believe that the one left is going to be fulfilled just like all the others. I don't think God leaves us hanging with that one. So as, as we prepare and we wait with anticipation and excitement. Tuesday, the family, Joanna and Casey and I drove up to North Carolina to see uh, Caitlin, my daughter, and, and Winston-Salem and Joanna's parents came and we spent Thanksgiving Day together and then we spent some time with the family. But Tuesdays, we're driving up and we go up through Georgia, we go through South Carolina and all of that mess of a construction. South Carolina, fix your roads. Um, but as we cross into North Carolina, right across the state line, we start seeing stuff that we don't know what's going on. There are the, on fire trucks on overpasses with their ladders up and these huge American flags draped down. And we're seeing signs that say, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. And we see more fire trucks on overpasses with ladders up and flags down. And we see this big flashing uh, sign, welcome home, Trooper Wooten. And we're like, okay, that's cool. Somebody's coming home from being stationed overseas or something, whatever. And then we drive by this the way station and there must have been a hundred law enforcement cars of state, city, that they were everywhere. And then all of these motor, uh, law enforcement motorcycles and his helicopters landing. So I'm going, what the heck is going on? So Joanna Casey, talk to Siri, see what's happening. So Joanna Googles, who is Trooper Wooten in North Carolina? And Trooper Wooten was a state trooper in the state of North Carolina, and he was in pursuit on his motorcycle of bad guys. And he was involved in an accident on his motorcycle and was paralyzed from the neck down. And Trooper Wooten was brought to, they didn't say which hospital, was brought to a hospital in the Atlanta area and had surgery and did some rehab and, and, and some recovery there, and then was moved to an apartment, an apartment where he continued rehab for almost two years. Trooper Wooten has been in the Atlanta area. And during that time, he became ordained and he performed his daughter's wedding. And during those two years, people in Cramerton, North Carolina, that's one of those towns, if you ain't going there, you're never going to find it. In Cramerton, North Carolina, for two years, they've been working on Trooper Wooten's house to make it accessible for Trooper Wooten. And it was finished at the end of the summer. And on Thanksgiving week, Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, Trooper Wooten flew from, North, from Atlanta to North Carolina, got off the helicopter, was put in a car, and mo we didn't see the motorcade, but the motorcade then took him from that way station to Cramerton, North Carolina, and his house. And every overpass we passed had an American flag with the fire trucks, their ladders out, law enforcement officers over the the overpasses um, and all of these law enforcement cars and people on the side of the roads with, with this excitement and this anticipation and this thankfulness of Trooper Wooten coming home. I even, well, I'm driving and I'm like wiping away tears. I've never met Trooper Wooten, never heard of him till that day. And the whole time I'm thinking, once Joanna looked him up, the whole time I'm thinking, Lord, let me let me look forward to the coming of Jesus with the same excitement and the same anticipation and the same wonderment as this community and these people are looking forward to Trooper Wooten coming home to his family, to a new home that's been outfitted for him on Thanksgiving week. Let me have that same excitement and wonderment and anticipation for Jesus Christ, our King of Kings. And I don't know if I do. Not all the time. And as we wait and as we prepare, we kind of do this in several different ways, don't we? I know I do. Some of us are anxious when we wait 
we prepare. We're anticipating something. We're anxious. We, we, with, we, we respond with anxiousness and anxiety. And um, some of you are too young to remember this. Um, even I got to go back, but before we were allowed in delivery rooms, uh, when the moms had the babies, what did men have to do? They kind of had to sit out in the waiting room and they just paced back and forth waiting on a nurse or a doctor. Terry Atkins is going, yep. They, they had to wait out for the nurse or the doctor to come out and say, it's a boy or it's a girl. Mom and baby are healthy. Everything's good. And they paced and they were anxious and they worried. I know when Joanna had a surgery and, and I even waiting in the waiting room, the whole time I'm like, somebody please tell me something. Update me. I'm anxious and I'm worried. Anxious people that are forced to wait in doctor's offices frequently, what are they doing? They're checking their watches. They might get up and, and go to the reception desk and say, where am I on the list? Where are we at? How soon? or they're on their phone checking different things. And anxiety in the scripture passage is shown by an obsession to know exactly these disciples. They wanna know exactly when is Jesus coming back. And they focus on events both in nature and current events to pinpoint that time of when Jesus is coming. And their anxiousness has been passed down from generation to generation of Christians. And today we have a booming market in books, in seminars, in Bible studies that attempt to tell us exactly to the day and to the hour, to the minute, when is Jesus coming back? And scripture says, don't even try. Nobody knows. Only God. And that obsession of these anxious Christians causes them to lose the reality of the present. They miss out on enjoying and savoring the present and in participating in the ministry that the present offers. What are we doing in the world in the here and the now? Showing and offering the love and the acceptance and the forgiveness and the mercy of Christ in the world that so needs that love. Some people, and I pray this is not me, some people will go through this season of anticipation and preparation with indifference. And I pray, God, please don't let that be me. They wait by mindlessly paging through magazines, you know, if they're at the doctor's office or whatever, or they're zoning off and they just go off into space somewhere. They understand that waiting is just a part of life, a necessary evil, and they just surrender to it. And they're just like, okay, when my time comes, my time comes, and I get to go see the doctor. And the time washes over them, and then it's lost forever. And it seems that if, if Christians are not obsessing over possible arrival dates for Jesus, they are totally indifferent to it at all. They don't, they don't wonder, they don't ask, they don't ponder Jesus' promise to return if they think about it at all. They don't care when Jesus comes and may even question the idea of him returning at all. It's really not, it just... And they don't even think about it. They believe that we will see Jesus face to face when we die and we stand in front of him as he sits on the throne when we have to face him for judgment not at some cataclysmic time of an end times event. And indifferent Christians appear to be caught up in the present, the, the, the everyday struggles of life. Their interest is focused on speculating when the stock market will become a bull market, how they will make their next credit card payment, or whether they should go on vacation to Hawaii or the Caribbean. Um, the return of Christ to them is mere speculation, um, and it's not worth the investment of time and energy and worry to worry about it. And the present crowds the present crowds out the future and the physical overwhelms the spiritual in their lives. And their indifference causes them to give up future expectations and doing so, it diminishes their hope. And then there are folks in the, as in the parable today that Jesus tells at the end of this passage, that as they wait and they prepare and they anticipate that they do it as faithful servants. A few people wait their time, they seek to use it 
in a way that is productive in whatever way that may be. The, the parable that Jesus shares with his disciples in his passage challenges Christians to respond to Jesus' promise to remain and return as faithful servants. The master leaves his home and places his servants in charge. And they are challenged. They're instructed to keep things ready for the master's return. So they have an option. I can keep things cleaned. I can think, keep things picked up. I can keep things ready. Everything's perfect. Everything's great, like just as it was if the master was here. Or we can slack off. We can let things go. We can party. We can just have fun. We can sleep in. We can do whatever. We'll get to it tomorrow. And the problem is what? Tomorrow never comes. And the master returns home and the servants aren't ready or prepared for the master's return. And Jesus challenges us in this passage, stay awake, stay prepared, stay faithful for nobody knows when the king of kings will return. We Christians are to be about our master's business while he is gone and we await his return. We occupy our days by giving out cold water and sharing the good news with those people we encounter and who are part of our lives. We find ways to share God's love in this world that right now so desperately needs it. We all know somebody that needs to hear the hope and the peace and the comfort that Christ offers us. And each Christmas, we Christians, we have this Christmas challenge. In the middle of our preparation for Christmas and the birth of the Christ child, we are invited to see and experience the hope that Jesus will come again and the hope that that provides us. And in the midst of the hustle and bustle of the season, we are challenged to see the need around us and to minister to those who are in need and to share the good news of God's love and forgiveness. So as we walk our way through this time of in between, of remembering and celebrating and yet looking forward to, we are challenged to stay awake and to be ambassadors of Christ to this world. And may we stay ready and may we help others become ready. The world needs us. The world needs Christ's love. Now more than ever, and may we be, may we be ambassadors used by God in this world. And may we begin a revival. Gracious and loving God, as we look towards you in this season, May we remember and celebrate the arrival of your son 2,000 plus years ago in that cave and in that trough. May we remember that and celebrate you coming to earth to walk with us and to be with your people. But yet, Lord, may we also find hope that you will come again. And may we place all of our hope in you. And may we look to you this season. We ask this in the name of your precious son. Amen. If you have been visiting with us and would like to call this your church home, I would invite you to come forward during this closing hymn and we will make sure that happens. If you've been watching online and you might wanna join the church, you can contact the Reverend Beth Sugar, whose information should be on the screen and she will make sure that happens. So now 
As you are able, please stand and join us as we sing our closing song this morning.
seat real quick and I'm going to I'm going to ask Terry Atkins to come up. She's got a word for us about a very important event that's coming up um, in the life of the church. So Terry, if you'll fill us all in. Thank you, David. I'm really happy to be worshiping with you all today. And now Thanksgiving has come and gone. The turkey is history. That means that Christmas is coming soon. And United Methodist Women would like to invite everyone, men, women, and children of all ages to join us for an old-fashioned Christmas program on next Sunday, December the 4th at 2.30 in the afternoon in the sanctuary. There will be a program of Christmas readings and wonderful music by our chamber chorale. After the program, there will be cookies and cocoa in the fellowship hall and those who are not able to come in person will be able to view it on live stream on our Duluth First United Methodist Church YouTube worship channel. And you never can tell, but there's a rumor around that a man with a long white beard and a red suit might just make an appearance. So please plan to join us to kick off your holiday this year, next Saturday, December the 4th at 2.30. Thank you, David. Thank you, Terry. Don't miss it, gonna be a great time. Um, another couple of things we wanna highlight for you this morning. Um, please get you a Sunday supplement. If you don't have one already, make sure you grab one. Um, uh, December 1st, um, such an important program coming. Um, if you have lost a loved one or, or something has happened, um, December 1st, a new, um, a new season of Grief Share, uh, Surviving the Holidays, that class will be beginning on December 1st at 6.30 um, downstairs from here in the First Floyd Family Life Center. I'm in F-153 and 154. What a great program that is. Um, and then Terry talked about the old-fashioned Christmas um, there's several, there's, there's several listed in here of how we celebrate Advent and Christmas through music, but I do want to highlight one on Wednesday, December 15th, Wednesday night at 6 p.m., immediately following Wednesday night supper, but at 6, so make sure you get here and eat and be done by 6. In the sanctuary that night at 6, um, the children and the youth will be presenting um, a Christmas musical calling all angels that night at 6 o'clock, so we invite you. And then we will also have Carol sing along um, down there that night too, so we invite you to be here for that. And then December 3rd on Friday night, this is, that, this is coming Friday night, um, the children's ministry will be presenting um, a movie night in the fish tank downstairs. Um, for pre-K through fifth grade. I bet Leslie would let you come if you were older or younger, especially older than that, if you want to come for movie night. I bet she would let you come. They're going to be showing the star um, in the fish tank or the youth hall downstairs uh, next this coming Friday night from 5 to 7. Um, and who knows what kind of snacks and everything else be, might be there. So um, join us then. Um, and then I want to invite you to make sure you're here next Sunday morning and invite all of your friends, everybody you know, next Sunday morning we're going to be placing Christmas on the trees. Um, and we invite, we don't do that. We invite you to do that on Sunday morning during worship service. Um, it's such a special time. So we invite you to be here next Sunday to grab a Chris Mon or two off the, off the tables and then bring them up and hang them on the trees as we sing and we worship and praise Jesus next Sunday morning. So we invite you to be here for that. Now, if you would stand for our benediction as you are able and are sending forth. 
as we go forth from this place as children of God, may we go forth remembering and celebrating the coming of Jesus as a baby and waiting and looking forward to expectantly Jesus coming again. And may we rest in the hope that that provides us and may we share that hope with this world who needs it so badly right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. Love y'all. Help us stack chairs if you wouldn't mind.